So this week we're talking about one of my very favorite subjects, which is editing film. And the reason why I am so in love with editing a film is because you can take various shots um, from your that you filmed and edit them in such a way that you can convince people that things happened in an order that they didn't particularly happen. And I find that that ability is really fascinating. So what editing is basically is in filmmaking, this is a verb, um, you select and you join various camera takes together. And again, what's really fascinating about editing is that there is a language to the way in which you need to join together the shots that you've planned while you're working on your cinematography in such a way while you're editing so that they make sense to your audience. And that is what we're going to be discussing today. So we are in this day and age cut addicts. Um, between 1930 and 1960, an average, you know, 90 minute to two hour film would have between three and 500 shots in it. So those individual pieces of un, um, uncut film that were joined together. So three to 500. Nowadays, we have more than 2000 typically in a 90 minute to two hour film and in action films, you will have more than 3000. So what you should be able to think about from that observation is that when you want to have a feeling of energy and of, of maybe impending doom or violence, the more cuts that you have. The fewer cuts you have, the more meditative and slow and thoughtful your film is. The more cuts, the more energetic, the more hyper, the more over the top your film will be. And you're going to want to keep thinking about this for our final project because you are going to be editing a video. So pay careful attention. Now, what I want to do, first of all, is show you a long take. And this is one of the most famous long takes that ever was. It's from the film Goodfellas. Um, and if you haven't watched Goodfellas, you should watch it. And um, you'll notice that in this long take, that very careful cinematography has to be set up. There, This is a tracking shot. So the camera is following along with the characters as if the characters are being pulled by the camera. That makes us as um, audience members or viewers identify with the characters, but also notice how we become really immersed in the scene. We feel like we are part of it. So a long take is any take that is longer than about a minute. And um, and, and really anytime you get to about a minute, you're, it feels like it's gone way over the top. Um, but Pay attention to how the camera has to really go with the characters and make us feel like we are part of the scene.
delivery. Nice to see. Yeah, good to see you. Hi, how are you? Hand to me, right in the front. Great, great, thanks. Anything you need, Henry. Just let me know. Okay, I'm going to take it. I know you're waiting for it. I'll be right with you. I have another train. Cause. So I wanted to show you that long take just to emphasize to you, to each one of you, like what editing does do. In that particular shot, there was absolutely no editing. I stopped the video right when the first cut was made. And cut is basically when you take two different pieces of film and you, you cut them apart and then you join them together in order to make it seem continuous. And to do a long take is something really flashy that a director can do because it takes a lot of planning. You should have paid attention to the cinematography that was taking place there. There were several pans. There was medium shots. There were close-ups. There were establishing shots. Um, but there was nothing. There were no cuts. There was no point where the film was taken apart and then put back together. And it takes a lot of work to do that. So what we're going to be talking about today is also the work that goes into putting together editing, which is such a cool thing to do. So continuity editing is what we are used to. And continuity editing is a system of cutting film, basically, to maintain continuous and clear narrative action. Continuity editing relies on matching screen direction, position, and temporal in other words, time relations from shot to shot. Now we all know, we've heard this before over and over again, how to put together a 90 minute to a two hour to a three hour film that actors and directors and producers go on location and shoot them for anywhere between, you know, six weeks to six months to sometimes six years. Um, and then edit them, th them together. And we're going to be really seriously thinking about that today. Like what kind of planning and editing goes into making the film appear to be continuous, even though we know mentally we're very clear on the fact that it took far, far longer to shoot that film than the time that we're going to spend experiencing it. So one thing that you need to understand when you're thinking about editing is also, again, the relationship between cinematography and editing. In order for editing to work, you need to be thinking about the 180 degree line, which, which is known as, um, to, these days, filmmakers violate the 180 degree line a lot, but nevertheless, I want to give you some information about what the 180 degree line is and what it's supposed to do. So basically, you know, a, a regular circle has 360 degrees to it. And so the 180 degree line cuts that circle in half. And what you basically want to do in order to establish the 180 degree line is figure out what's called um, the line of action that is going on. So it's basically where are the characters moving? What are they going to be doing? And when you figure out where they're going to be um, existing in the space, you draw a line down the middle of that activity and you choose either one side or the other side to put the camera on. You cannot move the camera from one side to the other side without destroying what's called, um, you know, continuity editing. Because if, say, in this example here, 
they've chosen to put the camera on the right side. And once you put the camera on the right side, every time the camera shoots these two people, the man in the blue is on the right and the man in the yellow is on the left. Now what happens if you flip the camera over to this side is that suddenly the man in the yellow is on the right and the man in the blue is on the left. And that's very confusing to your audience. So I want you to be paying attention to this as you watch um, your, you know, your favorite TV shows or your favorite movies as you go forward. The older the film is, the more that the director is going to um, follow this 180 degree line. These days we have so much more flexibility with lighter cameras, um, you know, cameras that you can actually strap to a cameraman's body that they tend to violate the 180 degree rule more often. But nevertheless, there are certain kinds of consistencies that we still follow, especially during what's known as shot reverse shots during conversations. And we're going to be following that too. So again, just as a quick recap before we move on, um, once you've established the 180 degree line, you do want to keep your camera on this half of the circle. And you can put it anywhere along here, but you typically want to keep it on one side so that your characters don't suddenly switch degrees or angles. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a film or a, the opening footage from Vertigo. And this is the opening scene. We're going to see an establishing and a reestablishing shot and a cut in and a cutaway, an island match and a match on action. And again, for all of these, you need to follow the 180 degree rule in order to make sure that you maintain continuity and so that your audience doesn't get confused. Now, for this particular opening shot, we have a close up on the fugitive's hands and you see him come up and run to the left side of the camera. Then the cop comes up, runs to the left side, and then the detective comes up, runs to the left. And then you can see that the camera moves to the left and follows them alongside the rooftop. They're all running from right to left and there we have a pan going on. And of course, we have to keep all the characters running from right to left. So now we have the fugitive going up over the roof top. The cop is now following him going up over the roof. We can see the San Francisco Bay in the background establishing the fact that we're in San Francisco. Okay. Now that was a match on action. Okay, I just messed this up a little bit because I pushed pause on the wrong software program. So I'm going to finish this recording um, and upload it and then start over and explain what a match on action is. So I'll see you in another minute.